Hey there, everyone. Kara Gott Warner here, host of Power Pearls podcast, and I hop on here every Friday. And today I'm going to bring you some quick and dirty tips for making some yarn cozies, which I think you're going to like. So here it is. Here's uh, the cozy that I've been making. I started making it this morning, and I'm going to show you some really cool tips to make this cozy or any cozy that you want. It can be in any weight yarn. Um, and so this is all about being more free form, having fun with our knitting. You know I'm always, if you guys have been following along, you know I'm all about the intuitive aspects of knitting. But you know, these videos that I do every Friday, it's about getting in there, getting in and getting out, right? Getting in and getting out. So that's why I kind of came up with this quick and dirty tips because you know, I, I love, I tell you, I love small, quick, projects. I love having balls, balls of yarn everywhere, balls, balls of yarn, uh, like this, you know, um, bat bins, I'm sorry, bowls. That's what I should have said. Bowls of yarn like this. These are like scraps from gosh, so many different projects. So always having these around, like they're just part of the decor so that I can mix and match and pull things out from wherever I need to. So that's it. So I'm waiting for you guys to come on today. I did a little bit of, uh, gosh, I didn't do a whole lot of like announcing this. I was in such a spontaneous mood, which is really kind of funny because the yarn, this yarn, the cozy that's made it, this cozy, it's called spun, spontaneous, spontaneous. You're getting the reverse of this. It's a cat. It's from Cascade. It's really cool and I'm finally using it. It's been in my stash forever. And so also I want to talk about sustainability, how when we, just to kind of think about how when we are using our stash, stash, stash yarns or we're upcycling like a, an old sweater, you know, we go to the, the thrift store, whatever, um, we're, we're like doing a favor to the planet, aren't we? So that's something that really is meaningful and I'm gonna be, gonna be talking about that more and more. But, uh, but yeah, so stash, you know, diving into that stash is really a great way to do it. So um, I'm gonna jump in in just a little bit. I see some of you guys coming on in. Uh, Bev is watching, hello, nice to see you Bev. Nice that you could make it today for this broadcast. Uh, it's gonna be a fun and quick time together. So if you could, Bev, before we get going, please share uh, with your friends, with your Facebook friends. I always, I, I haven't done that in a while. I keep for, I'm forgetting. But the more the merrier, you know, let's get people, uh, you know, let's get the energy. So it would be nice to have um, more people chime in and uh, start the conversation. But I know here on Facebook, a lot of the times, People are watching the replays more than they're on live. So uh, you know what? I am speaking to all of you guys that are here live, of course, but also to all of you guys that are watching at a later time. So I'm really glad that you could make it. So we're talking cozies. How to, I'm going to demo how to do the cast on that I use for this and also how uh, you can measure any cup, any size. Uh, just by doing a simple, some simple measurements and using your yarn. So there's no measuring tape. There's no need to understand how many stitches to cast on. None of that stuff. We're not even going to worry about it. And then stick around because at the end, I'm going to uh, share how you can get your hands on a, a guide. I call it the quick and dirty guide to cozy making. Plus you get my matcha tea recipe. It's a sweet matcha tea recipe and I love it. I usually have it every afternoon. Sometimes I have it at night, but you know, green tea has caffeine in it. So not a good, not a good thing. So I usually have it right around this time of the day. So I'm sharing my beloved recipe with you guys. Uh, and that's in the little freebie. So freebie, uh, that I'm sharing with you guys. So I'll let you know how you can get your hands on that in just a little bit. So for those of you that are here watching, so I know that I see that some of you guys are coming into the room, please share where you're from. You know, let's let's get into the comments here together, and uh, and then take a moment if you could to share this out with your friends on Facebook. That would be super super awesome. All right. So let's see, what are we going to be talking about? So question, 
before we do get into this, because I'm going to dive into the, the demo pretty quickly. I have a goal, okay? I have a goal to keep these videos shorter, because <laughs> I know sometimes I'll go 30 minutes, sometimes more than 30 minutes. So my goal is like 15 to 20, so that you have nice little chunks of time, you know, little, little, like take something and leave, you know, get in, get out. <laughs> I don't know if I said that here earlier or I said it over on Instagram. I forget where I say things. But anyway, hey, Amy, nice to see you. Amy's in Manhattan Beach. Wow, that's Los, Los Angeles. So nice to see you today, Amy. Um, so I have a question for you. So again, stash diving, using the yarns from our stash. I consider this a sustainable act, right? So we're doing the planet a favor. Uh, you know, there's other ways that we can knit sustainably, but specifically I am, the reason why I, I'm sharing the cozies from our stash, you know, talking about stash diving, is one way of being sustainable. So that's my question. How do you knit sustainably? In other words, have you upcycled old sweaters? Um, have you done yarn, sh yarn swaps with friends? So if there's a yarn that doesn't serve you, instead of keeping it in your, in your uh, stash, swap with a friend so then you guys can feel like it's like a brand new yarn it's like a brand new experience because you just you know you're you're recycling but you're it's like new to you um so you know because when we do this when we recycle when we upcycle whatever you want to call it we are definitely doing a favor to to the planet and also i'm really big on um plant-based knitting so i do have resources and i'll share those in future episodes and i'll be talking about that more and more because more now more than ever it's becoming increasingly important that we are very aware of everything that we use everything down to the food we consume and the yarn because uh you know there there's still um we do have a carbon carbon footprint as they say so um whatever we can do to lessen that so i'd love for you guys to jump in the comments and share how you feel that you're making a contribution, how you're knitting sustainably, and also, um, you know, maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're not sure if you are and you'd like to learn. So you can even ask that as a question back to me, and I'm happy to uh, share some ideas. So while you're thinking about the, that question, and, and as I see more of you guys come in, I might circle back and ask that question once again. Okay, so uh, like I said earlier, so I'm gonna show you how to make this cozy or a cozy, not necessarily this cozy, but this is my little sample. And what I did was, if you can see what I did, I made it with um, very simple one by one rib, so you can see that, right? Um, and with blanket stitch, that's what this is, and it's two different yarns. So I went in once and I worked the blanket stitch and then I did it again with another on top of it. So I went kind of in between, and a couple of them I did twice, two, two blue stitch, two blue, um, stitches between the pink um, so I, I wanted it to be really really rustic and it's a nice little accent it's a nice cute little cozy um, you might hear by the way you might hear my son London come in you know sometimes he's the star of the show but he comes home from school right about now so I figure if he's gonna pop his head down it's all right because this is real life isn't it oh good <clears throat> so Bev you just swapped yarn with your sister on Tuesday that's awesome so do you, um, so how much, like, how much yarn did you swap with her? And do you feel like it's a whole new experience now that you have some new yarn that's new, was once old, but now is new for you? I'm just looking to see if, hey, London, how you doing? So I'm going to be on my video for another 10 minutes or so. And, uh, and then I'll uh, situate you. I know you got to go to the party, party, but you can go next door in a little bit. To, well, because I have to leave. But anyway, we'll talk in a little bit. Go to the bathroom. I'm tingling. Hey, that's not nice. London. I guess he thought that was funny. Any, anyway. <laughs> Woo. Where was I? So, yeah. So the blanket stitch, just to, it really adds a really nice accent to this cozy. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you how I did it. And then this means that you can use a bulky weight worsted weight, whatever, whatever you want to do, you know, it's, it's really, there's really no limit, uh, to your imagination. And also ribbing is good for giving it, you know, so it's, it stretches. Obviously we know this, uh, if you were to make this just like in stockinette, it might fall off your cozy, your cup. 
just something to keep in mind but you could rib the top and the bottom and do the middle in um, stockinette this was my other idea and I didn't have time and then you could do the middle um, with a uh, let's say a duplicate stitch you know or maybe um, a, a racing stripe look like a couple of stripes in stockinette with ribbing on either side so I mean it's like crazy and then the you know some other kind of embellishment on the bottom so there's so many ideas so maybe during the week because uh, I'm, I'm loving this and I might make more just there's so much fun uh, and then if I make more I'll share them on Facebook with you guys okay so uh, let's see so I'm gonna jump back in I know some of you guys came in late um, so Amy says I extended a sweater I'd knit for my toddler niece I ripped I ripped it up to the underarms and re-knit the same yarn plus some extra yarn since the sweater is now is larger now I just finished it last night oh that's awesome that's great um, and then Bev says we okay we swap all the time seems like we always need what the other one has that's great super resourceful things you guys that was great thanks for sharing and Joanne um, Joanne says I hope I didn't miss too much tried to pick up the video on iPad <clears throat> didn't work so on didn't work so on my iPhone um, I just asked a question earlier I'm just gonna dive into it so before we we go into this demo um, I asked if you um, how do you knit sustainably this is something that I'm gonna be talking about a lot more but today it's about diving into our stash and doing stuff like this these little gifts these little things that we can make that we can express our, our passion for yarn and knitting with making these small these small things um, and so I think I consider um, diving into our stash as a very sustainable act because we are recycling upcycling that sort of thing so that was my question how do you knit sustainably uh, and so in other words that would be like do you upcycle old sweaters do you um, have you done yarn swaps with your friends um, you know what have you tried in order to be a conscious yarn crafter so that's my question Joanne awesome so Bev says cozies with matching coasters equal rug rugs and hugs yes I know and this isn't really like a, a mug they call I think they call them mug rugs this well this was um this is fabric upholstery fabric which I have a whole lot of but because um, this does integrate yarn I thought I'd show you so I did basket the um, but blanket sorry blanket stitch on this right so it's the same as on the top of this but a little bit different um, and I, I made a, I made a bunch of coasters like this these are all over my house <laughs> um, so and then I just have my little cup on there right now so you really can't see it but it looks really cool looks really cool there it is um, okay yes the cozies are too cute love them okay thanks Joanne all right so here's how we're gonna do it and I'm gonna take off this because I have to show you so here's the cozy off the cup and look at my isn't that cool this is cool this is my so this is a, and by the way this is a sustainable cup it's a biodegradable cup it's actually plastic but it is recyclable and it can be refilled so it's safe plastic um, and uh, it's pretty awesome got it at Starbucks okay there you go there's a, there's there's an ad Woo! I mean I'm not I had no intention on doing that okay anyway so I always take this to uh, when I take my weekly I only do it once a week uh, when I go to in Indianapolis and I bring this cup and I fill it up and I get my black and white at Starbucks that's my other guilty pleasure but at the end of this episode I'm gonna share my my uh, freebie guide that you guys can get it is my quick and dirty guide to cozy tips like you know tips for all the stuff I'm talking about here and my recipe my green tea my green matcha tea recipe and it is so yummy I call it my afternoon delight I told my father that the other day and he just laughed um, because you know he thinks that doesn't sound delightful but it is delightful trust me um, okay so hi Bonnie nice to see you Bonnie says hi Kara can you cut up newspaper wrappers and crochet a coaster as an example right now <laughs> sure no but I, I get it yes that's hmm can you cut up newspaper wrappers and crochet a coaster that's and I you know crochet I have I crochet but I'm you know I'm so all about knitting but why not let's start maybe I should start crocheting again because I love to crochet I always have my crochet hooks hanging out um, 
but that's fun. And here's another thing, Bonnie, um, now that we're on the, the, um, the sustainability uh, kick and we're talking about how we can upcycle, um, I cut, I did this in creative knitting, but to cut fabric, just take fabric and do like this zigzag approach where you're cutting lines of fabric. You're not cutting it all the way to the end. I'll have to show you guys, but you, you cut, I think I did it once, maybe on, on this, on this um, weekly video, or I did it um, on my old creative knitting videos. But you just basically, you cut the fabric in strips and you just keep going and then uh, you knit with the fabric strips and you know with the frayed edges and all that kind of stuff it's all rustic it's no big deal really nice really fun um i know i have swatches somewhere so um Good. yes yes okay can you go upstairs please be a good boy and i will see you very very soon <laughs> you can say hello will you show everybody your food you want to say you want to you want to actually say hi to everybody okay all right go, hot go on upstairs food. yes food snack okay so let's start with the uh with the demo let's see bridget hello bridget just jumped in the room and so bonnie london bonnie says london you're adorable handsome hello. joanne says hi london he says i know i am oh whatever whatevs I get that from Teen Titans. I think I watch too much of Teen Titans. If you have kids, then maybe, then you know Teen Titans. But anyway, don't even get me started. I love Beast Boy. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to... So this is the yarn I'm using. So it is called um, Spontaneous. It's from Classic... No, sorry, not Classic. I was going to say a different company. Uh, Cascade Yarns. Spontaneous. And this is, um, this is the yarn that I used for the cozy, this cozy that you see right here that I had on my cup. And so I may have to turn it down. So let me see, I'm not gonna flip, usually when I flip my camera, that's when we get cray cray. Um, but I think if I just move this down a little bit, I don't know if I can even do that because I think I'm gonna, um, well, maybe, there you go. Okay, you see that? You get to see some of the ugly other background things. Um, okay, so this is what we do. So we just go around the cup three times. So there's one. Yes, you're welcome, Starbucks. You get a plug. Two, and do it in the widest part of the cup, right? And then three, you see that? And then once you have your, you know, you have your length of yarn, this is enough for casting on your fingers right there and then add another and you can eyeball this we're talking about intuitive knitting we're not getting too crazy with casting on however many stitches this is about being creative free form totally intuitive and then just like eyeball it so mm, another four to six inches are right there and then this is where we're going to cast on we're going to add our little loop right that's what we're going to cast we're going to cast on from there now since i worked a one by one rib i cast it on uh let's see 16 stitches for this right and i'm using four needles size 15. four needles and i and i put four stitches on each needle to equal the 16 obviously so i put let's do this let's put it there put the loop on Okay, and then we're going to work a backward loop. Now, if you've see, you you would think to use the working side of like the yarn from the ball, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. This is how we can we know how many to cast. You know, when we know we've cast it on enough. So, but because this is I'm doing this in rib, I know I need 16 stitches. But let's say you were going to work in a different, um, you know, you just wanted to work in a different stitch. We're going to use the tail end to cast on, and when we have about, you know, four to six inch tail, we're done. And then we start working. So here's how we do it. We, we pick up, we make a loop, and we twist it. See that? Twist it, put it on, and slide it. I'll just show this to you a few times. Pick it up, pick up a loop, pick up a loop and twist. Twist it, put it on your needle, and then 
bring it up snug. I've heard people say, slip it and tug. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Turn, you know, make a loop, put it on your needle, and tug. See? That's it. Now, usually what I do is I cast all of my stitches onto one, one double point needle, and then I transfer them onto the other needles because, um, you know what, it's just easier to do that. So that's it. That's the demo. That's it. And so here's, here it is. So you can kind of see this close up. So it's one by one rib is what I'm marking. I'm going to flip you guys back. That was easy. So instead of, I'm trying to be resourceful or not, maybe that's not the right word, but to not do too much movement here back and forth. Cause you know, the, I've had that struggle where I, I flip the camera all the way around, but in this case it works. Did you guys get the idea? What do you think about that? Lately I have been, uh, I've been showing these simpler ways of working either straight direct to camera like this or like I just did. So I think it's pretty clear. So I bet you want to know how you can get your hands on this, on this little guide, on this little quick and dirty guide, huh? All right. So, oh, and also, um, before I share it, um, I also said that I was going to share a link for my stash therapy. Now, I know a lot of you guys watching, you've been here for that. Last year we did it, and I was going to just share the replay so you guys could just do it again and, and, um, and re-watch the videos in a more organized way so you'd get them by signing up for um, a lit, you know, one of my lists so that you would just get the, um, the videos sent to you and instead of looking for them, because they are, I think I did the stash therapy uh, in the Stitchucation group, because I've got the Stitchucation group, I have this page, and then of course I have the Patreon, you know, the patrons only page. So it might be confusing for to some of you guys. I am going to be rebranding Stitchucation to, it's going to be a Power Pearls group, just a little FYI, you know, power to the pearl, because it's all about empowerment. It's all about how can we be more intuitive uh, and purpose-driven knitters, right? That's what it's all about. So here's how you can get your hands on this awesome guide. It's a quick, like I said, quick and dirty, quick, quick tips. Nothing, I didn't recreate the wheel, but it's like some little things that, these things that I talked about, plus a few other things. But you get my recipe, my matcha, my tea recipe, um, and it is delightful. It's delish. So go to caragotwarner.com forward slash cozy, C-O-Z-Y, and you'll get it. So you guys, this was fun. I enjoyed this. Look, I kept it under a half hour. And that was my goal so that you guys could have these quick and dirty little videos. That's my, that's my word for the day. But these quick videos, you know, because we only have so much time and sometimes I run really long. So this is my way of just, I'm really trying to be more mindful so that you guys can consume this, you know, get in, get out and get on with your day, get on with your weekend. Okay. So this was awesome. And thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next week. See ya.